That's right, you know what you're tuned into. You're tuned into 102.5 WSKP, your worldwide station for the greatest SketchUp hits of the 80s, 90s, and today. SketchUp Live, SketchUp Live. This is the place, fans and friends, and odds and ends, time to rotate and move, soften and smooth. Have no fear, Friday's here. Today's the day for rootin', tootin', scoot, bootin', modeling showcase. Today, Aaron will be sketching up a big time request of Vespa. That's right. Oh, man. The motor scooter, as we know it, hit the streets just after World War II. So strap in for some extension goodness. Will we see Sub D? Did you warn her about Fredo Corner? Will it end with True Bend? We'll have to wait and see for Circle Tool. All right, gee whiz, look what time it is. Time to end the intro and get into the real show. Time to change the scene, if you know what I mean. We're tuned in, so let it begin. This is the event you've all been waiting for. It's Friday. It's time for SketchUp Live. And here is your host, Aaron Dixon. Wow. I don't... Oh, man. It's all downhill from here, guys. I'm sorry. We've, we've already peaked. Oh. Is, it, is that the is that the Ed McMahon laugh? <laughs> oh boy! Oh, wow. Okay. Woo! Phew! I'm pumped. I'm ready to do this thing. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. Let's go. Uh, hey everybody. <laughs> it is Friday, and uh, that means we're gonna model some stuff in SketchUp. I'm Aaron. Uh, on the phone with me is uh, the posse: Jody, Matt, and Nick. Um, and I just feel like we got to give a round of applause to that intro. That that has me more excited than than I think I've I've ever been on here. This is. <laughs> I will definitely give it the intro for myself. Yes. Well. I... Uh, yeah. No. Happy to be here. Excited for this show. It's gonna be a great one. I guess so. Um. That was that was more more rhyming than uh. I have, I have ever, I would ever have expected from anybody for a live stream. That was. I'm, I'm really curious how long Matt sat and like was <laughs> like thinking of the perfect rhymes and trying to get this, this whole thing. Or I mean, God, part of me wants him that to all be just completely spontaneous. But yeah, <laughs> I, I don't, I don't know, see how I it wish. could be. <laughs> that, that was impressive. That's, I mean, I was off last week and uh, the week before I got my toes stepped on for the intro, so I had, I had time to prepare. It was like three weeks worth built up, you know. So. That's true. That's true. That was and well, time well spent. That was that was an explosion of introduction. So awesome. So, all right. So today, uh, Matt mentioned we're gonna do probably one of the most requested uh, models we've had in a long time, and that is a Vespa. So um, I admit um, I did kind of put this off. We use a Vespa image, like a plan image in a skill builder, two, three, three, probably three years ago. Um, and we've had the request since then. Can you model that? Can you model the Vespa? It's actually what, something that comes up still on that older video. Is there a video where you actually model it? Um, and the answer has always been no, because I'm a little scared of the shape of a Vespa. So, um, but I figured might as well go for it. Uh, you know, it's Friday, it's summertime. Uh, it's going to be fun. All right. So I, I, I feel like this is, is kind of going to be a gateway. This is going to open the door for uh, Sydney Opera House. Just saying, right? I, yeah, I think this should open the door to Tyson modeling the Sydney <laughs> Opera House. I think that is uh, totally valid and should definitely happen. So we're going to hand out uh, <clears throat> Tyson's 
Email address at the end of this, and you guys can let them know how much you want to see that. <laughs> vote, vote yes for Sydney Opera House. Vote yes, vote often. Um, <clears throat> okay. Let's do this. So uh, one thing, so right up front, I totally try to be transparent and honest with you guys. I haven't tried to model this, but I have been thinking of how I'm going to go about it. So a Vespa, uh, you know, I was thinking there's a couple ways we do it. One, we could do a very low fidelity, low quality, blocky, representative version of a SketchUp, which would be, it'd be okay. I mean, there's, it would still be all right. But I really did want to try to get some of the curves in on there. So we're going to fairly quickly step out of native tools and use extensions. Um, I don't know exactly which ones I'm going to use, but I have a feeling that uh, of, of the tool set I'll need. So I do have some, if you look up the top there, I do have some extension toolbars loaded already. Uh, some of the tools I yes. plan on using up here. It's like 20, 20 extra icons up there. This is <laughs> There's be, a whole row. Yeah. I won't hit all these buttons, but I I, uh, I turned out what I thought I might need. So um, for the body of the Vespa, I think I'll probably model it with sub D. So that's what's that's here on the end, sub D. And along with sub D, my standard uh, workflow for organic modeling includes vertex tools and quad face tools. So probably use that. All those are TomTom Tom tools, that whole tool set. Uh, plus, there's some other shapes that maybe don't merit full subdivision modeling, but you know, there are curvy, that sort of thing. So I do have some Fredo tools up here, Fredo cor corner, curve aloft, and joint push pull. Uh, joint push pull is not necessarily an organic modeling tool, but the nice thing about joint push pull is it'll let me take a curve and add depth to it. So if I want to take a piece of something and then, you know, just I can I can make the complex curve on one side and then push pull it to give it depth. Makes it a lot easier. So that's what I'm and those some are of, thinking. Some of those are paid extensions, is that right? Yeah. So I know that Vertex Tools and Sub D are both paid extensions. Um, as far as I know, there's not a good subdivision modeling tool extension that's free. Uh, Artisan's the other one that a lot of people use, but that is also a paid tool. Um, but I just have to say that if if that's the kind of thing, so here's the thing, right? So I know I know if it doesn't happen in a live stream, it'll happen in the comments afterwards. Blah blah blah. Other tool is better at this kind of modeling, but you know whatever. That's that's tr that's probably true. There's other tools that are made. There's NURBS modelers that are made for creating soft smooth shapes that's that's awesome um but if you don't have that other software it doesn't help you that that's a better tool so i'm a big fan of using the tool that you actually have access to so here on the sketchup channel obviously we're using sketchup but uh if you have sketchup and you want to get into subdivision modeling adding these little tools on top is a small investment versus potentially jumping up into a whole nother uh tool set or in a whole other uh program so that's just kind of my thought on that. That's that's not. I don't mean to get ranty or anything like that, but it it might be worth uh, trying to call you out okay. when, whenever you're using extension to see what if you didn't have that extension, mm -hmm. what you might have done without having to dig into it completely. Yeah, no, that's that's great, and and I've actually done that before where we did uh, we did a live stream where we modeled a helicopter, all with native tools, and that process I still think is a very valid. Uh, process and it could be done to make a lot of shapes. Uh, I made a shorter skill builder of it where we made a gas tank from a uh, motorcycle. Same process. It, it works perfectly fine. Um, this is a little more complex shape. So both those shapes, you know, body of a helicopter is kind of an obloid. Am I making words Obloid's up? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, and it's an eggy shape. Um, but yeah. So uh, with that, I think we will go hop in. And then I forgot to say hi. Hello, everybody. Thanks for signing in. We got people coming in from all over the world again. India, LA, Cape Town, Kansas City. Um, yeah, that's awesome. I appreciate everybody coming. <laughs> I, I like that you go from Cape Town to Kansas City, which feels uh, <laughs> about as middle of America as you can get. <laughs> I said, oh, a middle of America is part of the world. Oh yeah, I know. It's just boring to you. I mean, some people might really enjoy visiting Kansas or something. I'm sure that family members of everybody that lives in Kansas City <laughs> likes to visit Kansas City. 
Awesome. Or people, fans of barbecue. There we go. Yeah, that's a thing. Yeah. Okay, so let's hop in. Um, I'm going to go ahead and import the image from the forum. If you didn't go up there, forums.sketchup.com, uh, in our happening section, we do create a stream or a, a topic for every live stream we do. And there's also a calendar up there. Somebody actually was asking about that on the forum today. If you go to happenings, you can actually see the happenings calendar and it shows you everything that we're doing uh, at SketchUp. So it includes all these live streams, but also includes things like our fireside chat, which we're doing uh, every Wednesday at noon for the next six weeks or so. Mm -hmm. um, and that link to the forum thread is in the description of the video as well. Nice. Um, and as you get started, just call out a couple other places people are uh, visiting us from here today. Afghanistan, uh, Peru, uh, Nicaragua, Nic Nicaragua uh, Austria, uh, Vietnam, wow. and UK. My gosh, you guys are Woo. bringing it home from all over. I love it. Like I said in the intro, it's the international. Did I say international? I said something like that. Worldwide. <laughs> There's a lot of worlds. words. That got said. I did not track them all. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I'm going to go ahead, go to file and import. I'm actually going to use uh, the file that uh, Colin posted. Colin took my image and up leveled it. I'm going to make this just nice and big. So there are some dimensions on here that we could use to put this to a proper scale afterwards. But uh, right now I just want nice big lines that I can work off of. Okay, um, cool. So there's two main parts that I see. There'll be a little bit of a challenge. So the big one obvious, <clears throat> obviously is right back here. All right, so we have this thing uh, from the side, it kind of has this curve like this. If you look at it from the back, it comes out both ways. Look at it from the top, it tapers back. So this shape curves in every direction at once, right? So it's there is no, there's not really a flat plane. Even the bottom where it's cut off, this kind of swoops like this. So I'm thinking what we'll do is we'll do this as a piece. Separate from that, we'll do kind of this middle of this stalk here. So this shape like goes kind of like this. This has a little bit of a taper back here, um, a little bit of a taper going up front, but less transformation. Then in the front, we have this, I don't know, this riot shield here on the front. I think that's what it's called. <laughs> that's a fairly easy shape compared to the other ones, though that's gonna not be quite as difficult. Um, the rest of the shapes we've are, are shapes that are fairly simple. We've done wheels before. Uh, the seat's pretty easy. It's kind of like a basically a 2D extrusion with a couple of maybe round corner on there. Um, handlebars, probably the simplest shape on there. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna just hop in and start doing it. I think the body. I'm gonna start here. Start with the kind of go in the order of what I just said. So gonna start with like this this back wheel wheel well section, model that up. And I think I'm gonna use subdivision for this piece and then for this like this frame section in the middle. So we're gonna model both of those as low poly shapes and use sub D to kind of go in and uh, round them out. So I'm gonna draw right on top of here. I, I know Tyson, Tyson does this a little bit differently than I do. And um, that's cool. It's always fun to see different ways to do it. That's what I tell myself when I do these sorts of things. Uh, he was, he's been doing a lot of images and what he'll do is he'll put a copy of a component here and then put a separate copy of the component off to the side. Maybe I'll try that. I'll, I'll try, uh, try being Tyson like, um, crack out, crack out your, uh, your touchpad, your tablet. Yeah. I'll just, I'll use this on my mouse and see. It's going to be a long stream today, it's, boys. It's not going to work. That's, <laughs> that's rough. Um, so. I'm going to go for it. I'm going to start with a, a preliminary shape. I know that this curves. So what I'm kind of thinking is actually, I'll just chop that out of my final shape rather than trying to include that. So I'm going to go like this, draw a line across there. I'm going to pull one line up like this, come across to here, drop back down. 
There's one piece. And come up here, come across, come back down. So I think from the side, I want to go kind of like that. So that's going to be uh, looking at it in one section. I'm going to take that, I'm going to make it a component. I am going to, so this is, for the most part, it's symmetric. We have some stuff like the, the starter and some other pieces that aren't symmetric on here, but um, I don't even know that I'll get to that level of detail in this model. So I am going to try to make it all symmetric, so model half of it and let the, uh, the component, copy the component and let it fill it in. Um, all right, so now I got that piece. I'm going to go ahead and take it, copy a, a, a piece down to right here, and then I will rotate that upright like that. Okay, and then I could take another one, take that again, bring that over here, and rotate that one upright as well. So now what I can do is I can work on any three of these, and because they're components, all of them will update at the same time. So if I was to come over here, and push pull this out like this because that's that's the overall width of half of it i'll see i'll get the same thing over here so i'm going to do this okay we'll come up here yeah so i can start pulling that back okay that's looking good um, I'm going to go ahead and close up the back here. And let's go ahead and save this. Nice save. <laughs> Load those up because I'm going to save at least two more times. <laughs> and actually, I'm going to come back here and I'm going to get rid of this back face. So one of the things that subdivision modeling does uh, is lets you take a basic shape like this, and then I can hit the subdivision tool, which I actually have mapped to the keystroke U, which is on my 3D model. So I just tap U, and it does that, and, and I can see how it's going to look. So I can quickly toggle that on and off like that. One of the things it does do is if I have an open face like this, it doesn't, it doesn't pull it. See, it's going to leave it as a flat face like that, which is kind of cool. Um, all right, so I mean, already we're looking, I know, I, I know, I know, give me, you know, grain of salt, but it's already looking pretty cool. Um, couple things. Yeah, you've got the, the hard part done. Yeah, the, the model draws itself from here. Um, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna actually get rid of the bottom. So that way when I, I do that, it keeps it flat on both sides. See that? So again, we're looking even more fendery. This is pretty cool. This is going quick. Um, all right, so I'm going to come to this view right here, and I think some of the stuff I'm going to change. So I'm going to grab this line right here and slide it back like this. I'm going to grab this line right here and move that back a little bit. Actually, I'm going to, I'll probably grab that and slide it way back. And then hit U to subdivide that. That's looking pretty good. All right, if I come back to this one, I did see that uh, I think because the way it tapers back in, you can see it comes back here, I'll probably want to take some of this. Maybe I'll even come in here and just scoot this line back. No, I think I'll have to, well, let's see. So as I look at it, I want it to come in like this. So this is when I'm going to start using uh, Vertex Tools. So Vertex Tools is a tool set also from TomTom. Tom. And what Vertex Tools lets you do is uh, <clears throat> move geometry by the points. So at its simplest form, that's what it does. It lets you take a point and move it as opposed to an edge or a face. This is a little bit different from how SketchUp works. 
Um, but a lot of people who are used to 3D modeling, do a lot of 3D modeling, uh, are used to working with models in this way. Uh, another thing that Vertex Tools does is it honors quad geometry. So quad geometry is what uh, subdivision modeling like this, when I hit the U key, this uses quads to figure out where it should smooth this shape out. So if I show my hidden, it breaks it down into these smooth shapes by breaking into smaller triangles and then hiding the pieces in between the main seams. Um, and one of the problems you can run into is moving geometry, so just grabbing geometry and scooting it around can actually end up breaking quads. So like this one just here just broke by, by doing that move. Doing that same move with vertex tools is going to honor that quad geometry and not let it break. So uh, once I get into more complex movements, other than like these simple moves I did up here, I do want to use vertex tools to maintain that geometry. Okay, so one of the big things is this piece right here is going to slide back in a little ways. Something kind of like that. And I'm just going to keep toggling U on and off so I can see how does that line up. Okay, so that was a little too much. I came in too far. I, I don't completely like that you've used the letter U for that so that you keep talking about toggling me on and off. Sorry. You know, I, feel, I feel attacked. It's, it was requested by the viewers. It wasn't me, Jody. <laughs> not, it's not you it's me it's not me it's them that's right i'm totally willing to pass the buck on there okay so that looks pretty good that's still pretty good um i feel like actually dang that's it's really close i was thinking we'd have to go in here and break this down into smaller pieces but i kind of feel like that's good i am going to take it and uh i'm gonna bump it up so again if we look at hidden geometry this is what's happening right now uh, I can increase the subdivision level here, which is going to give me a, it, so, well, two things, right? It gives me a smoother piece. So, you know, we're looking at this, this looks fairly smooth, but as I spin around, you can see those edges. So it is a little, little clunky is as I hit plus, those lines become smoother. But also, if you look at the difference between the plus and the minus, as I do that, it kind of pulls in a little bit tighter. So things like this corner right here, if I, you know, as opposed to this, obviously this pulled in quite a ways, but if you look at that to this, that corner pulls in even more. So a lot of times you'll have your higher level, your, your coarse subdivision looking good. And then as soon as you go finer, everything pulls in and shrinks a little bit more. Subdivision modeling is not a precision modeling process. So there's probably people out there who would argue and they can make it happen. That's awesome if they can do it. I can't. When I model, it's more like sculpting and I get near the shape. So this is not going to exactly match anything, but it's going to give me an idea of, okay, yeah, like right here, I probably need to pull this front edge out and make this a little flatter on the front. Um, that's easy. I can do that. I can make that happen. Um, I'm going to go ahead and unsubdivide you says again, I'm going to take this piece and pull this, use vertex tools to scoop this out a little ways and then subdivide again, getting closer. Um, so this is also a spot where I may try to t do something like crease this. So if I grab these two lines like this, I don't know if this can work, but I can try creasing it to pull that out to a little bit flatter face. That looks a little closer to what's actually going on. Cool. That looks pretty neat. Um, the other thing I have happening is I do have right here kind of a crease right there. So I might be able to emulate that by grabbing this line right here and creasing it just a bit too. Might be able to pull that out a little bit more. So I might back this one down a little bit. Cool. And then we'll up that. Okay, so that gives me kind of, see there I have that little bit of a bump there. And then from the top, ah, that's a little too much. I had to, I'll back that in a little bit. So I'll grab both of these, go to crease and drag them down just a hair.
All right, so that's pretty good. I like that for half my fender. Um, nice. So what I should probably start doing, I'm gonna option copy this over here. And this is where I'll start kind of compositing my pieces. This is where they're gonna come together. So I'll take a copy of this, option copy it over, scale it backwards, negative one. I know I could use flip along, but I didn't. Not even give you guys a chance to say it. So there is my back end. Oh, I, got, I do want to come in and I want to create this arc, slice that off. Um, I'm going to save, Command S. A fine save. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, when it comes to so so this is this is a. Uh, this is something to think about when you, when you come in here and you you do want to there's a point at which you stop subdividing there's a point at which you come in and you're like okay i got my geometry now i gotta go do other things to it so I, I, smooth yeah right no yeah 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 i want to make yeah if i wanted to make stuff like if i want to intersect this with other geometry if i want to go in and start adding details like uh whatever this little door is here um you can do that stuff with subdivision. You can get in and make very intricate subdivision models. But a lot of times in SketchUp, there's a point at which you're like, all right, I'm done with subdivision. Now I'm going to move on to adding these other details. When you get to that point, you need to make get this piece where it's like, okay, it's at the right level of detail, and then accept that you're going to break the model. And that's exactly where I'm at now. So I'm going to say, this is the piece I want. Um, I'm going to detach it from its subdivision origin and I'm going to uh, make some more changes to it. So when I get to that point, what I usually do is grab my original subdivision model, move it over, and then make it unique. So what happens is as I go in here and I start changing this model, if I have to jump back, oh crap, everything went bad. Where's my original? I can still come back to this one. Maybe I'll even unsubdivide it so I have this to fall back on. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to take all of this. I'm going to just do regular soft and smooth on it. I'm going to draw a line across here. So that's going to give me one solid piece. And the reason that's important is what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to create a solid to cut out of it that's going to give me the bottom of that wheel well. So. And the reason that you um, have to like break the geometry or like separate it from its <clears throat> like subdivision thing, is that because when you do the intersection, like it's not going to honor the quad face thing? Or is it like, is does the, you know, does the extension identify it as like special geometry yes. in order to subdivide it? That's right. Yeah. So it knows, it recognizes the geometry I created as being uh, um, subdivision geometry. So it knows what it is. So as soon as I go in here to break it, oh, hold on, I, need to, I can't talk and do this apparently at the same time. <laughs> yeah, no, it's okay. But I'm just thinking like, can you just subdivide anything and it'll just look like crap and not work like you wanted it to? Or is it like, it only works on specific stuff? Right, so let's, here, let's hop in here. I'll show you exactly what's happening. So I'm gonna go ahead and unhide this piece. So if I come in here and we just look at this, when I show hidden, everything in here, see, is a, it's, it's all, they're all quads. So four-sided piece with a line breaking it. That's a quad. Um, they're all quads. As soon as I come in here and do my intersect to get my, my little uh, kind of arc on the bottom here, these quads are going to get broken. So watch, watch this right now. So I'm going to go ahead and take this piece right here. I'm gonna use solid tools. I'm gonna say, take this piece and subtract this geometry from this geometry. So I'm gonna say subtract from this. And there we go, now I have this, it's, it's subtle, but I have that little arc on the bottom. But here's the thing, look at, look at what it did to my quads, right? So oh, no. yeah, stuff's not quaddy anymore. It's, it's other shapes. I have n-gons in here, they work. Nothing's bad about this. It's not like it's garbage or anything, but 
I'll save, and okay. then I'll try to unsubdivide and resubdivide this. Just Ooh. made your, your geometry spicy. Bad things. See, that's... Man. It looks like a it looks like a bug. It looks like a little pill bug or something now. <laughs> so I'm gonna undo that. So it doesn't recognize this anymore as the original subdivided geometry I created because it's not. I, I changed it. So if I hit subdivision right now, it tries to subdivide the current geometry rather than take it back to the low poly uh, quad geometry I had before, which is expected. That's what it should be doing. But the cool thing, like I said, is that over here, if we look at this. We have our rear fender all done, and it includes, oops, did I not make that a, oh, it's a group because I did did that wrong. That's okay, now I know that. So I can actually, and I can take this and make this a new component, and this is my new rear fender, which I will now take, bring over here. Flip it up right. All right, just like I did before. Cool. Thanks for addressing the geometry thing, by the way. Yeah. I feel like it's just in my nature to like break stuff. Like, oh yeah. Where does it break? It's very, very easy to break things. <laughs> okay. Um so I'm gonna go ahead and take this guy and put him over here also. This is gonna be this is going to kind of end up as uh, a junkyard over here on the side. This be a spare parts um, where I can just kind of keep a history of my pieces as I need them. And then over here, this will be the showroom where hopefully uh, a nice, pretty Vespa comes together. Okay, so next piece. Um, that's going to be this kind of... It's going to be quite a shape. We'll see, we'll see what happens. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just start drawing it. So you notice last time, one of the things I did try to do was I did try to draw everything as quads right from the beginning. So rectangles like this, if possible. Um, this just makes it a little bit easier to work with as I come into the different shapes. Sorry, trying to, trying to do that talk and click at the same time. Oops, sorry. <laughs> I got credit for something I didn't even do there. I'll take it. <laughs> uh, all my sounds are set up to like uh, keyboard shortcuts <laughs> by default. And I was, thought I was looking something up on Google and no, I was just playing every sound. All right then. <laughs> That's okay. It made me feel good about myself. I'll take it. So D cube did ask, um, what would happen if you draw a kind of support edge around the downside of the fender? Support edge. Do you, do you have a clarifying question? Yeah, I have no idea what you're talking about. Okay. <laughs> So the answer will be, uh, mm. yeah. non-committal shrug. That's right. That's the one. Huh. Matt's got it. All right. Uh huh. Ah, yeah, yeah that's the one. <laughs> All right. So again, what I'm doing is just kind of clicking through here, trying to keep everything at this at this point when I make my flat outline. And I got to point out too, there is so many different ways to do this geometry. Um, different people do this in different different ways depending on how they've learned or they probably know it better than I do. Some people actually know what they're doing when they do these things. I'm, I'm winging it. <laughs> Specifically, uh, modeling like in this, this technique. Um, but... Uh, what I'm going to try to do is keep everything as rectangles for the time for, for right now as we start this. Um, so obviously right now I have an issue in that this piece is not a, a quad. It's got more than more than four sides. There's a couple things I could do right now, depending on how I think I want my 3D shape to, to move. 
Um, I do think I'm gonna want a couple breaks here because of the way this goes from narrow to wider. So I think what I might do is I might just grab a line and pull it up like this. So that makes a poly or a, a quad here and all the way up. And then I'm actually gonna put a second one in like this to break that, that mesh into smaller pieces. Um, same thing up here. I'm gonna go like this and put a line to here and then a line to here. That's a kind of an arrow shape, but guess how many sides it has. Go on, guess. Is it is this a trick question? Feels like a trick question. I can't answer that because that might ruin the trick. All right, so I'm gonna make this into a component. I'm gonna say half. I'm calling this the frame. I don't know. Um, okay, that looks pretty good. Yeah, looks all right. Uh, I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna slide a copy back here to the middle and then stand it up like that. Okay, and I think with that, actually, I think I can kind of take that shape and use push pull to bring a lot of these shapes out. Um, so I'm gonna start here in the middle and I'm gonna pull this out the smallest amount. So I'm, I'm looking right down here and seeing that I think that this is kind of where the frame's at. So I'm gonna start with that there, pull these pieces out like this, and this will all get fine tuned, but it's an initial massing that I can use. Um, by the way, by the way, YouTube said four four sides. He sees four sides. Nice, you win. He also then went on to answer uh, Vivi's question of what's that thing in your left hand? Ooh, what time is it? Thirty five minutes in. I guess that's about average now, right? Yeah, about right. So this over here in my left in my left hand. Oh, sorry, I didn't realize I was so far off with my other mouse. I I tend to kind of slowly creep up and off the screen like that. I'm sorry. Um, this over here on the left side is a 3D mouse. This is the Space Mouse Enterprise from 3D Connection. Uh, it is not a required tool to run SketchUp, but it is a nice tool to have if you do any kind of 3D modeling in uh, most 3D modeling programs support it. What it lets you do is rather than use this mouse, the standard mouse and the, the middle button to do my zooming, which SketchUp does a really great job of making this easy to move around in a 3D model. I, I don't want to discount what it does because it does a really good job. This is a super easy way to move in 3D, but it does take this mouse. So what this does is it puts all the zooming and panning over here on the left mouse, while this mouse can be used to go grab the next command that I want to use or pull up some information over here on the side. The other thing it does is it gives you these nice smooth movements. This is actually probably the reason I use it for live streaming like this, because it does give you this nice smooth movements when you're dealing with things like buffering, um, reduced uh, fidelity in the stream, that kind of stuff. Being able to limit that as much as possible or, or you know, make, make the movements themselves as smooth as possible is a good thing. So if you do any kind of display where you show people what you've modeled, it's a good thing to consider. The other thing, like I said, is it does let me increase the amount of time I can use my main mouse because all the, I don't, I'm not distracted, my right mouse isn't distracted by moving around the model. Uh, that happens with just the left mouse. So a uh, nice option to have if you're a designer looking to get to that next level of proficiency, or if you do a lot of showing people models, uh, it's a good option there too. Yeah, very good call. Um, also, somebody in the chat was talking about clash detection, and uh, you should check out Trimble Connect. Trimble Connect has some clash detection options that, uh, yeah, that work really good. We'll do the do the job. So check them out. Yep. All right. Pull that out. I'm gonna pull that out again. I'm using vertex tools to pull these these faces out because. Uh, Whoa, 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 
Susskin Cookie. You gotta, you gotta be, be careful. careful. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> yeah, I better save because I don't know what's happening. All right, let's try this one. Uh, Z. I think you should never like round over any of these edges. You should leave it kind of angular like this, and then we can pretend that it's like the Tesla Vespa. Tespa. Vespa. <laughs> nice. I like I it. I do like that. That's weird. I don't know why that is happening. All right, let's try again. Run out. Run out. Okay, that's better. That's better. Whew. Things got things got silly. All right, let's try that again. So vertex tools will move the vertexes like up on the on an edge or a face or just a single vertex. That's right. Yeah, so I can grab any number of vertices and move them all at once. So pretty nice. And like I said, this is this is a lot easier to to do massing in this low quality view to do that like this than to try to do this all with curves. So if I was to do this and not use subdivision modeling, what I'd probably do is similar to the way we've done like helmets in the past. I'd go through and I'd create the arc in one direction, create the arc in another direction, create an arc in the third direction, and then use a lot of lofting to go in and skin those ribs. So I basically, you know, create for something like this, what does it look like? Cross section here, 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 and then use lofting to go in and fill it in. Um, which is not a bad way to do it, but this way as it is, um, it's just a little more forgiving because I can come in here and say, okay, subdivide that. What doesn't look good? And I could go back and make changes to just that piece that's not what I want it to be. Um, that actually looks pretty close. So I'm going to get rid of a few faces because I want this to stay flat. Uh, I want all of this underside to stay flat. Let's try. Yeah, see, look at that. That's that's slick. I like it. And actually, um, I don't want this to stay flat. I want that to round out a little bit. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I like it. Um, good. Yeah, that looks pretty nice. Yeah, geez, what are you going to do for the next hour and a half? chill i'm just gonna sit sit and hang out oh, i don't want to get to talk enough hey guys yeah, how's get it to going hang, talk to the chat <laughs> um had a question will 3d support come to sketchup online i think that's something everybody wants yeah the 3d connections you mean that's what you're talking about yeah um right now it is created we, we support 3d connection through an extension that they supply with their mouse which i think is how they do it everywhere i don't know if anybody natively supports it um but that way you know they're doing their own updates for for their hardware and then uh our so software just kind of supports it so that's how we go about doing it right now um it is possible that we'll work out some way we we I don't know when extensions will be supported in the online version. It's, I imagine as soon as we have that, then 3D Connection will be supported. Or we'll have to work with them to do something native, but I don't know what anything like that would look like. So That was a total non-committal to anything that'll happen, but a way for me to say, I sure hope so. Thanks for your sympathy. Yeah. I try. So you're telling me there's a chance. <laughs> wow. Nice. You saved this. That's a good one to have. <laughs> A little slow, but uh, got there. Yeah, I, I, I take it. All right, so this is like the headlight. So I think what I'm going to do is kind of try to get this face upward so it's facing forward. So I think I'll grab this, pull that forward, something like that. Yeah, All right, that kind of works. Just kind of trying to get that. That's a pretty close close to that shape already. All right, so, man, yeah, it's going good. 
It's going a little too good. <laughs> feel feel like I feel like I have the weight of a hundred cobras leaning on me though. <laughs> I'm just liking the fact that you're saving as regularly as you do. Yeah, because uh, you think. I mean, you're... how many we're celebrating three years of the the great Notre Dame uh, screw up. <laughs> Celebrating? Is that the, is that the right word there? No, of my screw up, not what happened to actually happened Notre Dame. What? <laughs> my, no, no, my no. I up. mean, so we're ce celebrating your screw up though too. Well, that's kind of how I feel it happens. I'm just going to be honest. Okay. I really yeah. feel like uh, you guys, you get a lot out of my pain. I do get a lot out of your pain. Mm -hmm. I didn't even realize that was related to this. Oh, that's just fun in general then. All right, something like uh, that. Oops, got to select it. Okay, so yeah, so that's that's a pretty solid shape. That's, I mean, it's not solid, but it's solid. I'm going to go ahead and increase the subdivision level by one. Yes. All right, so at this point, again, so here's what we're, we're at that spot. I'm going to grab a copy of this, stick it over here. Um, make it unique, and maybe we'll just unsubdivide it. The reason I'm unsubdividing, unsubdividing these pieces as I set them off the side is this piece right now has 170 entities in it. This piece right here has 10 times that. So by putting a copy over here that could be subdivided later, I'd rather just keep it in its low poly state because it's going to mean for a more responsive model right now. So that's why that's why I do that when I when I stick it over there. All right. So what I'm going to do here, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and grab this. Go ahead and soften it completely so I get that. And then I'm just going to grab it. Mm -hmm. I'll go ahead and close it up first. Um, some of this is going to be harder to close like really hard yeah how would i do that let's see let me look at this show what i got see what i got here i think i would have to hand stitch this i'm not gonna don't worry don't stress don't do that i'll save it and then just you know Put a TV show on tonight and come in here and hand stitch all by myself. I don't know. I feel like there's, uh, you know, that's part of what the audience wants. Watch Aaron stitch things. I think we've proven that is not true. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was just the placing components uh, repeatedly. That's what really. That's a rough one as well. Yeah. 24 hour stream. Oh, gosh. It's the uh, the visual ASMR. Watching AKA, AKA hell. That's the hell that is uh that was the video card. So Chris was asking if you had any uh, any issues with your three D connection on Big Sur. Are you on Big Sur yet? I don't think so. I think I'm on Catalina. So no problems. No problems. Big Sur has not affected me in the slightest. Have any of you guys owned a Vespa or ridden a Vespa? I've seen them. I have not. I have not. Just been I had an old Honda. I, I had a Honda scooter uh, years ago, but it did not. It looked like an awkward teenager next to the sexy spelt Vespas out there. <laughs> It'd be a very boring model. All right, so I'm bringing this into Collide here, and I can see that my geometry is a little bit off. You can see right here how uh, on the on the real thing, it definitely, oh, it, it actually hangs out a little bit more. So let's go ahead and grab this. I'll align it to the bottom like that, and then I will pull it out of here just like, whoop, wrong guy. There we go. 
So Lawrence said his dad had a Vespa and a Lamptita. And mostly I'm just saying that out loud because I wanted to say the word Lamptita. Maybe you he did spelled it. it wrong because he just he just retracted that message. So maybe that's not a Lamptita. Okay, there we go. This is coming along. All right, I'm gonna grab this. So a lot of these names for for these uh, for these little scooters are sound very Italian, and I'm left wondering if uh, oh Lambretta is is that just basically that just what they do in Italy? Is they just hop on scooters? <laughs> just make scooters. Just, yeah. I can think of worse ways to spend time. I'll be honest. That's true. I do. Uh, I, we're we're scheduled to watch the uh, that new Pixar Vespa movie tonight. Me the, and the fam. The Vespa movie. Vespa's mm -hmm. written by mermaids. Mermen. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So I'm combining the two halves right now, and here's what I'm thinking. So I do have to close this up. So I'm sort of wondering if I just grab that. So that's just the geometry at the bottom there. I think what I could do is I could just use curve aloft. Ha! <laughs> no, you can't, sucker. That was a stupid thought. Let me try breaking it. So the uh, Vespa now makes a model called the Electretta, which is their uh, e-Vespa, I guess. So, so you can you can still be, uh, you know, environmentally, well, sort of are, environmentally friendly. Are Vespas still like a cool thing? Or are they like? I didn't I didn't know they ever went out of out of being cool. Are they trendy? Um, are they hit? Where where do they fall now? I don't know. I, I'll be honest. I'm not the person to consult when it comes to trends. That is true. I think it'd still be cool. Zip around, you know. Just uh, you can cut through traffic. You don't have to wait at a. I mean, you probably should wait at a stoplight, but usually the best. Yeah, wear your helmet, guys, if you're uh, cruising around out there. But All right. Simon said that. Vespas and Lambrettas are still cool. So okay, there you go. I think that if if it's an E Vespa, then how can it not be cool? E everything is cool now. That's true. Yeah. E is the new I, right? Probably also yeah. true. Okay. All true. right. Well, that whole idea to loft this was not is just not happening. I'm unloftable. Oh, see, this is what I'd have to do to get this to close up. Oh, and as I say that, I draw a line and it doesn't close up. Monster, why are you, why are you messing with me? <laughs> Oops, that's why that, was, that one was off. There we go. Um, I, you know what I need to do? I need like to set a weekend day aside. And just hang out, spend some quality time, just me and Curveloft. Because I feel like we only come together, you know, it's always business with us. And I think that's why it's not cool with me. Like, I, it just, we're always button heads. It's go time and it makes me look silly. But, uh. So theoretically, Curveloft should just sewn this thing up. I take full responsibility for when extensions don't work, though. It's it's nice that you that you'll take that on. Yeah. Um, because as we know, <laughs> instructions are for the weak, and uh, real men <laughs> it get stuff and hit buttons, and when nothing works, it's that thing's fault and not because I couldn't be bothered to actually learn how to do it properly. That, that's right. Yell at somebody else. That's right. All right, there we go. Mm, okay, fine. Hold on. I got to go inside. Inside. 
you need the Mario sound effect when he goes down the little green pipe. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then the whole time we're in inside of a model, it needs to be playing the. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh man, that's now it's throwing me back to Matt. Are you still uh, are you still in the speed run circuit for all the Mario games? Oh yeah, oh I'm top five on everything. Um, nice. No, no, I don't. Uh, I'm out of that game. Oh, well, it's still I'm sure interesting. Uh, I, yeah, I heard there's been a lot, a lot of uh, innovative tech in that space. I believe it. Oh yeah, it's. <laughs> All right, especially like the tool assisted stuff is just absolutely bonkers crazy. Every time I see a video that says speed run in 2.3 minutes for any game, now I'm just like, oh, I wonder, wonder if Matt's up on that. Right. Any percents just breaking it. How fast can we break this thing to get to the end? Yeah, it's cool. I wish they had that for, you know, modeling Vespas, just hacking it to. Get to the finish line right away. Back a long time ago, there was a, a TV, a TV program called. There was a there was a game show called Name That Tune, and you would have to pick a number of notes or something like that, or a number of seconds that it would take you to be able to name a tune. This was back in like the the sixties when there were only like fourteen songs. <laughs> it, was a lot, it was a lot easier back then. You had to actually Two have albums. a record contract to get music made back then, <laughs> right. as opposed to an internet connection. Yeah. Oh, here's one. How uh, how many notes does it take you to guess uh, this song? Oh, I got it. Oh, <laughs> I got it. See, it's funny, right? Because it doesn't take you that long. A lot of these things like just completely burn themselves in super fast. I'm so sick of that song. <laughs> <laughs> you need to upgrade it just for the sake of upgrading it. Mm -hmm. Little remix. Well, that's we. So we changed. Uh, you know, when we when we did the rebranding, the new logo, we did change all of our uh, info uh, graphics, or, or all of our uh, intro infographics. A different thing. Uh, our <laughs> intro graphic, and the question was like, well, how do we tie this back to? You know, we still want to make sure people know this is part of the same skill builder set, and uh, that was that was our decision was to stick with keep that, the sound, keep that music, yeah. All right, so for the front fender, I'm just tracing around it with arcs. And as, as often as possible, I try to make everything tangent. So that's going to give me just that initial shape. I don't know how this is going to work, but I'm going to try something. All right, so I'm going to take that. Straight over here. Take that. Get it upright. And all right, so I'm gonna. I like how whenever it's just sitting on the flat surface, it looks like you're basically adding like a a, a horn to the top of your <laughs> handlebars. All right, so I'm going to like take a rhino horn. Yeah. Kind of hot in these rhinos. It's like a, it's like somebody's trying to make a horn, but it's more of a banana. Yeah, banana horn. Um, so I'm going to take these edges and try this. And uh, let's try to round them. Oh, I don't know what scale anything's at. What's going to happen? Uh, let's try two inches. Okay, that's now I have some context. Um, more. Let's go for more. Let's go uh, four inches. All right, let's double that. Let's, let's go. Let's get. Let's get crazy. Eight inches. Ooh. Nope. Too much. Oh no. Six inches. Uh, okay, five. Okay, I guess we should have stuck with four. All right, four inches it is. Jeez. All right, so that gives us that shape, which is obviously that's not the shape that's here. 
but this is what I was wondering is, is if I can, if I come in here, um, cause somebody's asking about, you know, not subdividing and what I could do here is I could add a little extra geometry so I could draw some lines. Oops. Can I, can I draw lines? Really? Um, like uh, this. And then what I could do with that is I could actually take each of these sections and I could pull them in. Let's do this this way. All right, so let me go to a top view. go let's also go to parallel projection and we'll go to x-ray so what that shows me is this is where this should all go to so now what i can do um actually this would be a little bit difficult because i'll have to come like this scale that in like that can reselect a smaller set. It's not turning out the way I was expecting it to turn out. Um, Thought I could break that right back, but the problem I'm having is the way all this geometry is connecting. It's not connecting together solid. Uh, so let me try something else. Um, let me get rid of x ray and go back to perspective so I can actually work on this thing. Um, I think I can still do what I'm trying to do. I'm just going to have to go like this break this piece into smaller chunks. This is just an experiment to see if I can, because I could have subdivision modeled this. It would have been fairly quick. I'm going to take these pieces right here, and I want to actually make them not invisible. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off, soften, and smooth. So when I show hidden, there we go. So this is what I'm looking for. So now if I come in here, I can actually grab these pieces, squish them in like this. All right. And then grab this. Squish that in like that. Nope. There we go. Well, it's going to be a unique fender, if nothing else. Um, unique doesn't Custom. always mean good, either. I was just let's be straightforward with you on that one. Right, so let's get. Yeah, I think there, there are probably some some that would argue that just as long as you've ventured away from the norm, then that's that is a win. Well, it'll be something, I will say that. Undeniably. <laughs> it's a thing. It's definitely a thing. Also, I'll take this guy. How about that? That'd be my, my favorite response to... Well, you really did something, didn't you? So I got a fun fact for you about Vespas. All right. Um, apparently, uh, it's Italian for wasp. Uh, huh. And that was because they they thought it uh, the founder thought it looked like like the back end joined to the front um, looked like the body and then the steering column looks like an antenna. Okay, That's funny. I think mm, I don't see that there, but it's funny as as I was watching Aaron working on these segments, I was thinking that this this part looked like uh, yeah, the thorax. Yeah. yeah. All right. 
There we go. I'll grab all that. All that. I've always been intrigued by scooters and I've always lived in areas where I have too many miles to traverse at a, at a given time and I, I don't want to have to do it on a scooter. Yeah. So yeah. it seems like it really only works if you're in the city proper or if you do a lot of very local driving. Okay, so I did I didn't nail the whole geometry, but uh it's an option. Let me try to group. This is not a Vespa sprint, by the way. This is a uh a Vespa stroll. That's right. It's our own own unique creation as usual. <laughs> Alright, so I'm gonna line this up with the center. There we go. That doesn't look right. Great. Oh, that's funny. I just oh, went to just below. Uh, the Vespa's website and the very, like they've got just two images that's rotating back and forth on the front page. And one of them is the Pixar Luca movie. So apparently there's oh. some deep, deep ties between that show and the, uh, the Vespa. Nice. All right, let's look at this thing. So it looks like, here we go, I'll, I'll uh, throw this over in the, the parts yard. Um, okay, so this guy right here kind of goes up, curves, curves, and then, that curves this way. So I feel like, all right, so we got something that goes like this. Hmm. What I'm wondering is, nah, it definitely does have a curve. It doesn't go straight back. It actually curves. Let's try to do this with, uh, let's try to loft this thing. Sounds good to me. That's a curvy one for sure. So. All right, we'll lock that up like that. And then we'll take a line from there up to here. And then we'll go from there. We'll take another curve like that. And then, oops. Sometimes I get my initial curve on the screen like that, and I'll forget to click the second time. So I'm going to uh, weld that. I'm going to draw a second set of curves. What is that weird artifact that just goes straight up in the middle of your, your thing there? I think it was a, a fold in the paper of the original plans. Oh, yeah, a staple. It's probably a staple. Oh, uh -oh. Early. yeah. We just ripped this out of a library book. Jerks. Yeah. Well, he's using the copy that he got from Colin, so we can really kind of put this all in Colin. Sounds good. I like I like playing with Colin for things <laughs> that he has no responsibility for. That's my favorite. Okay. All right. So now. Can you grab all of this petrol per liter is 101 rupees in Vasant's region i'm like that's a lot of conversions <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm uh i'm not sure where to even start breaking that down i guess i'll i'll first of all i have to I have to make peace with the fact that petrol means gas mm -hmm. that's true and then liters, then rupees. Yeah. Okay. So Colin's saying Colin's not taking responsibility. He's not owning up to it. 
Ugh. <laughs> I'd say like I'm really uh, just so disappointed. <laughs> okay, truth is I might not really care. All right, and then look okay, at this. So, hundred and one rupees is a dollar thirty six American. Okay, so that's all right. So that's that's the cost. Now we have to figure out. It is one liter is rupees. 0.26 gallons. If you're trying to go to how much? Oh, okay, all right. So then we we basically just have to kick that up uh, times four. So buck thirty six times four. We're looking at holy cow, over five dollars a gallon. Ooh, wow. that is a significant Jeez. amount of money. Yeah. What are we at? Whereas here, here around here, I think it's close to three, right? Three dollars a gallon net right now, right? Two something, yeah. Yeah, somewhere around here as well. It was Which I guess works out to for me yesterday. Four ten. Four ten for ninety one for the the premium stuff. Oh, oh yeah, the, the good premium. stuff. I just, I just, but it was I like. Just, Three twenty, I think, for eighty-seven. Yeah. Well, that's that's still insane. Yeah, yeah. No, I just pump mine into a bucket, scoop out all the extra debris, <laughs> and then pour it into my tank. I just use, I use, I try to use a nice baggie, like a free, <laughs> like a freezer bag, the good stuff, you know. Yeah, that, that's, that's not happening anymore, zipper. right? That's that's a thing that we've moved past as as a country. Freezer bags full of gas. Is that correct? While the car is running. Ugh, that's horrible. We are something. <laughs> Florida man. Okay. <laughs> All right. So uh, I think. Does, does every country have a sort of an equivalent Florida <laughs> slash Florida man? Somebody that's that everybody just talks smack about how the stupid things they do there. I feel like Australia probably gets that for the whole country, which is not fair, but you know. Australian man? The world, the world thinks of Australia the way that America thinks of Florida. Oh, come on, man. All right, so let's try this. No, wrong button. I think that we should stop calling gas gasoline in the States and petrol everywhere else, and we should just start calling it gasoline. Like in Waterworld. Is it? Oh, uh, <clears throat> that's right, Waterworld. All right, so. Is this welded? No. All right, so if I weld that, weld that. This is a straight line. <laughs> Keggy said that um, well, I have to have to convert what I think there's a typo in there. Seven, seven dollars a gallon in the UK, and he said their gallons are bigger than ours. Which is, I don't, I, I part of me wants to believe that, and part of me wants to to call shenanigans. Well, I guess a pint is different, right? Is it? Yeah. Oh, I didn't realize. I've never been to the UK. So what do I know? I think a British pint is more. Like a little bit more? Is it a okay. imperial gallon? <laughs> Maybe. There you go. Huh. If that's a, if that's a thing, then it's it, then it's a thing. It says one imperial gallon is uh, one point two U.S. gallons. Okay. Wow. So it's by it's almost bigger by twenty five percent or twenty percent, I guess. It's impressive. And just par for the course that units don't work globally. But seven dollars a gallon sounds even if it is well, okay. I guess that's that's still more than we're paying a gallon here. Okay. And it's all overpriced everywhere. You're killing me. So here here's this great thought I was gonna use this extension to just knock this thing out and uh it's making a fool of me. Two, Anybody in the chat have three, they have you used uh four? This is curve aloft, right? Boom. Do it. Do it. 
that's always the fun thing about watching Aaron work with Curveloft is it's sort of watching him try and refigure it out is like whenever I try and figure out how flip along works. <laughs> but there's more processor overhead. Mm -hmm. What's going on, Aaron? All I'm seeing Nothing. Is, that's my problem. <laughs> Do something different then. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, come on. I thought that would be really cool. I was like just going to just loft loft the heck out of this thing and it was going to be so super sweet i'm using am i using the wrong one hold on i was clicking the wrong button i'd like to say it's the first time i've made that mistake as well yeah that was that was four seconds of work <laughs> nice well you got it yeah, all's well so, that ends well. Keg Stupid. Keggy said that Curveloft hates him as well, so you're not alone. Uh, well, it's so uh, again, can... again, I'll say that uh, the issue really comes down to using it exactly as it is supposed to be used. Just it just helps. <laughs> uh, oops. Jono said, "Use follow me to create a surface and then trim it to shape." No, oh, I got it. I was just, I was just being silly. But maybe, maybe that's how you could do it if you're uh, not using Curb Loft. If you were, say, if you're on the free version, the web version. That's true. That could work. Problem is, again, like the rest of this, there are so many spots where. Oh, that was the problem. Yeah, let's see if that works now. Uh, there's it it because it goes in multiple directions like that. Uh, it makes it a little more difficult to uh, make it with native tools. Excited dog somewhere. Oh, can you hear that? Sad. I just it's always assume it's Jody's house. <laughs> it's a, it's a reasonable assumption. All right. This should be flat. I think. That'll work. All right, and then this last piece. You got it. It happened. Gotta go. Gotta work now. You just gotta. Oh, I got extra geometry on there, but I didn't select it, so it should be okay. Ah, but no. Oh, wait. I think I have extra geometry here as well. So basically, curve loft has to be like super effective at, at helping you do complicated things because it takes you two tries or three tries to do it in curve loft. So it's basically got to be more than three times as fast or something like that. For right? me, yes, that's probably true. There we go. Um, I so what I I was actually thinking about this and I didn't do it um, when I was drawing onto this shape right here i was drawing onto here and i had no it was, it was when i was drawing this side i was drawing black lines onto a white and black drawing and thinking i can't see my lines very well and the problem was that when i drew this down here i had multiple lines crossing over each other so it actually made extra geometry so rather than going from a line right into the arc it went into a line and then the arc went under and reconnected to itself so uh it was my initial profile when I created that, it 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 broke it. So that was all on me. That was, that was all me. All right. Let's go ahead and take all this and explode it all. Orient faces. Uh, soften this thing up. All right. So now we got a sweet looking 
shield. Ooh, the cost of shield. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to give it some depth. This is where I'm going to use joint push pull. Just pull that up till I got a. All right, there we go. We got some depth on it. Resoften it. Cool. Nice. All right, so we'll take that now. Add the components. I don't know what these parts are called. That's never stopped me from naming a component before, though. That's where some of the best component names come from. That's right. <laughs> All right, where does this go? This actually drops all the way down to here. Ooh, cool. Me likey. Okay. Um, let's get this centered. Make a copy of it. that all right there we go okay I mean, it's definitely a vespa you'd, you'd, you'd be hard pressed not to recognize this as whoa a vespa <gasps> stuff got crazy i think i have some uh overlapping geometry here from joint push pull yeah so this will this will happen sometimes with joint push pull. Joint push pull is awesome because it lets you take, you know, push pull only works on on one face at a time. Joint push pull, you can use as many as you want. But sometimes as it offsets geometry, uh, the faces don't line up perfectly at a corner. So you get these little little discrepancies like this. You see it's creating a weird shadow. Nine times out of ten, you can actually come in here and go. Well, delete the whole component. It looks fine then. <laughs> uh, delete one face like that and just reconnect it. And there we go. Same thing over here. What it's doing is it's creating, see if I can get in here close enough. It's creating a little triangle right here. So it's creating a little ledge. So it, it's more than, it's not smooth. It's actually jumping back at almost 90 degrees. So I just get rid of this bottom line right here and then reconnect that line back to here. And just erase that. Or not erase, but smooth that. And then if we turn off hidden, there we go. So a lot of times you'll hit that and you're like, oh, such a mess, making such a such a big problem. But it's actually a pretty easy cleanup. All right. That's looking pretty cool for an hour and 15 minutes. I'm pretty happy with that so far. Yeah. How how far in are you? What do you think? Um, so we got to slap a seat up on here. We got to throw some wheels underneath. We got to get the handlebars and the uh, headlight. We're we're doing good. Um, Maybe about fifty percent, or what would you say? I'd say we're over fifty because I'm gonna seven percent. I'm gonna phone it in on a couple pieces. I'll be totally honest. I'm I'm not gonna. <laughs> we're not gonna go into detail for the wheels. We've done. We spent hours on wheels and live streams. So um, I'm gonna we've just. Spent, we've also spent less than a minute on wheels and live streams. <laughs> wheels are definitely. Uh, <laughs> Jo second class citizens to the model. make it quick that's right so jody just asked if i could do this in less than a minute i think that's what i just heard <laughs> i like to see just how fast you can make a vegetable wheel all right let's see let's see how, how how this goes all right so if i was to do something like that well i mean i could call that a wheel to be fair and, and... <laughs> you could <laughs> yeah. that's right it's, this is a flintstones round uh, scooter um uh, but we'll, we'll go. We'll go just just a touch beyond that. Um, let's let's undo that. So I think what I could do is something like I'm gonna use the the geometry of the wheel to kind of give me a general idea here. Um, I'll come out like maybe like that, and then I'll we'll go from that middle. I'll come out just a little bit, and then. Uh, middle of the, the tire will come up just past that like that and then we'll go here we'll start to come back out a little bit like this and then something like uh, that's not what i wanted to do 
right, let's go up. So if I was to take that shape, yeah, we'll we'll just do we'll do something, give it a little more a little more texture right here. Okay, so if I was to take that and then follow me. Yeah, that's okay. That's that's acceptable, I think. Yeah. It's, um, it's wheelish. Yeah. I accept it. Thank you. Um Vespa tires are narrow, I know. So let's let's get let's drag this over here and get this so it's looking like it's about the right size. Put that in the middle. Actually, let's put this at the edge. And then grab this, push this back to about the middle. Goes right about there. So I'll take all of that, find the center. Give me that again. And then I'll right here, option copy this around 180 degrees. I can just get rid of that wheel. Now we got we got a single single wheel. So I'm gonna grab that. Spin around. I'm gonna try to go by the center. So I'm gonna grab a center line. It doesn't really matter what center line, but as long as I have the middle of something, then I can line it up with the middle of some geometry over here too. Now I have to move it forward and back to get it lined up, but I know that it's it's in the right spot this way. So I can bring this over like this. Bring it over like that. It's looking okay, actually. That's, I might have to drop it down a little bit. So I'll go on the blue axis. Move it straight down. That's looking pretty cool. Yeah. All right, that was easy. Um, let's do a seat. All right, so for this seat, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and steal this. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to paste it right here. Make it a component. By copying this and working off this first, I know that whatever I create will fit directly right on top of my existing geometry. So I don't have to worry about... Uh, you know, rescaling or moving anything around afterwards. So let's get this aligned with this right here. Is that the middle point? It is. All right. So now I can come in here. Hmm. There's a couple ways I could do this too. Um, I'm going to get rid of half of it to start with. So again, uh, this is a time saver and honestly something that I get called out on a lot. So <laughs> I'm just gonna cut stuff in, in half anytime I can. Uh, because if, it does make sense. If this is the same geometry, why model it more than once? All right, so if I come up like this, I don't know if this is gonna work, but let's try it. So I'm gonna take that, we'll rotate that, tip it down like that, there we go. And then use scale. Stretch this back end out like that. Stretch the front end out like that. Sweet, pretty cool. All right, now what I wanna do, um, so this strap going over the top, I'll model that separately in just a second. But I think that's all gonna work. So I'm gonna grab that. Sometimes things go quicker and smoother than you expect. And I feel like like the universe just paid me back for everything I just did with Curve Aloft. Um, I feel like that's that's what Bob Ross would refer to as a happy little accident. I'm, I will take it. All right. So um, here, let's go ahead and hop up here. Actually, we, and we'll just take that and get it back upright. Copy it, option, come over here, scale, invert it. 
negative one. Slide these two together. All right, everything's looking good. I'm gonna join them back together now. Um, so, so one of the things I am, so I did talk about making components, making them separate halves. Um, the decision on when to take the two halves and put them back together is kind of a, a critical thing in any workflow. Because there's a spot at which you want to take it, to get, take it and put it together. The reason I'm doing it now is I want to round this corner with Fredo corner. And having that open ends potentially going to give me some weird geometry, make it harder to join together. It might work perfectly fine, but I'm not going to take the chance. It's got to join together eventually anyhow. So I'm going to go ahead and just explode and then make it one group like that. Um, get rid of that line, get rid of that line, and then soften that line and that line. And then what I can do is grab this and then just do, sorry, pick up my room. Uh, there we go. Fredo corner. And I think we can go a little bigger than that. Let's try six. Boom. And there we go. We got the rounded off corner. That looks pretty cool. Awesome. Now, it does have this kind of strappy thing that goes over. Oh, it also is a little right there. <laughs> so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do, that's a technical term. I apologize if I offend anyone. Yeah, exactly. I'd like to see you type that out. I'm going to turn on uh, closed captioning for, <laughs> for YouTube and see what happens. <laughs> Hard sounds. Okay. Uh, there's a couple things I was going to do here. Um, so I'm going to create a plane. Okay. So I'm going to take that plane. I'm going to make it a group, not because I'm going to do anything special with this group, but just because I want to uh, uh, not have to select the geometry over and over again. Um, all right, so that goes there. I'm going to make a copy of that. And what I'm doing is I'm going to constrain it to red and then use my cursor to line it up with the line over here. So these two lines represent where that strap goes. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to option copy that again. And I'm going to make several of these. Every place uh, I see a change. There we go in this, where I want the seat to change uh, geometry. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come into this, I'm gonna select just this top geometry here, and I'm going to say, intersect faces. Wait a minute, is that gonna cause an issue down here? Yeah, I'm down below, so I don't wanna do that, hold up. I'm gonna grab all of this. Go to vertical like that. Do you guys run all the way down? Yeah, all right, now I can come in here intersect face with model. All right, now I can get rid of these and I can start uh, doing this thing. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this and you see that's just, it's basically the equivalent of the strap. And then what I can do is just use joint push pull to just pull that A out lightning a little bit. Save. Sorry, you've been sneaking those in. I'm I have. I'm missing them. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying to learn. Trying to learn. Okay. <laughs> it's almost like a challenge between you, right? One of you's got to try and try and get the the save before the other one spots it. That's right. Those yeah. Bad sounds. It's tough. Key loggers off. I'm like oh, just man. watching file yeah. in the corner. Hold on. I should have had that on. Somebody needs to make a ch checklist. See, this is this is why we need somebody who knows what's going on. Um. Maybe maybe Matt could create like a whole audio file of the things you need to do at the beginning of each stream. Not a bad idea. Yeah, I should just include that as part of the intro. Um, I thought of it earlier, but then you were using a lot of extensions, and it was like, well, okay, you're not going to use a lot of, you know, besides you, which you talked about. Yeah, um, that's so. true. What are you going to do? Apparently, just slack. Slack hard. Okay. Um, so I'm going to try to make this seat with uh, some native tools. I'm gonna use scale here. I'll pull this out a little bit like that. Okay. Whoops, that did not go from the center. I hit the modifier key for some reason. 
I did not hit the monarch key. That was a problem. Okay, let's pull that out a little bit like that. Uh huh. Okay. Um, and then we'll come in here to this group right here. Let's get tighter than that. Let's. All right, I'm going to use uh, Alt Shift Select to turn off these extra bits. That's a minus select. That's a deselect. Because I just want to get this top piece going over like that. Oop, got a little extra there. Hold up. Try to sneak in. All right, so with just that selected, that's where I'm going to go uh, scale. Option key to scale about the middle. And shrink that in a little like that. And then we'll do one more right here. Plus select, oops, wrong direction. All right, and then I have a couple to turn off with my minus select. B select. You know, it was a few versions back. I want to throw this out. I want to ask you guys this. Um, a few versions back, we added invert. Oops, I'm messing up the front, but I'll get that in a second. We added an invert selection tool. If you have a selection made and you hit, I think it's I, it will deselect. Do you guys use that? I'm curious how many people uh, get into that. You guys use invert selection regularly? I do not. Is it just within context or is it? It's so if I was to hit, uh, I think it's I, is it just I? Yeah, right click. Um, I obviously I don't use it because I don't know how to work it. But uh, <laughs> command yeah, shift can, I, command is, shift uh, I. That's that's Colin's uh, offering it up. He says it's useful sometimes. B cube says he uses it often. Well, so there we go. Um, yeah, that's cool. So there we got a little bit of a shaped section. That's not that's not ideal. I don't love it, but uh, probably honestly could have could have uh, used sub D sub D for that. But I could come in here too. Ah, see now I'm fighting again with the fact that I did. I have this as two separate halves. Means if I want to come in and fine tune it, so if I want to want to take this piece pull it out a little bit. I got to grab this side and I got to come over here and get these lines. And then I can go scale that out from the middle to the spot where I may actually, if I was, if I really wanted to spend a lot of time fine tuning this, I may actually want to break it back in half again. Nah, just thinking out loud, but I'm not going to spend that much time on it. I'm just going to grab that. I'm going to grab that gonna use scale again all right so it's a little clunky but uh, the, the general shape is still there all right so then I can take that seat now grab it by a single point I'm gonna grab the middle of this back edge right here because that should align perfectly to that right there and there's that seat up on top. Nice. Looks comfy. It's it looks like something. Very look very plush. It does. It's squishy. <laughs> um all right, save. A fantastic reflex save. That's what I've been having happen. So I have taught myself <laughs> over the years, I have, have learned that if you're gonna use an extension, this is no dig on any particular extension, but stuff can happen um so i generally anytime i hit an extension i just command s um maybe that's my problem maybe i don't use enough extensions and that's why i don't save as often as i should hmm that's something okay. to think yeah, about I, certainly uh, there's some weird math going on there but i'll allow it yeah, i i'm i'm trying to pass the buck to a different part of myself apparently <laughs> all right uh, you do you uh, that's the only that's the only 
me, I know how, that's the only thing I know how to do. Yeah, that, that was really weird and awkward to get out. Yeah, that didn't do. come out well either. Uh, Hornox just showed up and said that this is a nice model today. Hey, thanks, Hornox. Hey, I, I know uh, Hornox is one of the guys I think of when I, I come in here and start doing subdivision modeling because he makes some pretty impressive stuff. See, that's like, there's this part of me that wonders if there's sort of like that, you know, the scene in the Matrix where... Uh, where Mouse runs in and he goes, Morpheus is fighting Neo. Like if somebody went and found Hornox and like they're like, Aaron's doing sub D. <laughs> <laughs> and I like that. I like that as an idea, as a concept. I think that's fun. Yeah, well, I'm all about fun. I know, yeah. I, but I would like to know if he does have somebody that also lets him know to that. Oh, he's going to screw it up. Oh, JDC showed up and started speaking in best best bees. He says beep beep. Yeah, that's production level just that sounds so high. Matt's on it today. <laughs> he's trying to. He, he's yeah, no, no, no. he's on something. <laughs> uh, somebody in the chat earlier called this out too. Is like I don't know if that's a true Vespa honk. It was listed as a Vespa honk, and like I downloaded it, but. But you're not an actual Vespa file, so you but, may or may not. He's not. Sure. He's All not right. Vesparian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Vespar. Um, they know. It seems like a thing that would have a specific, you know, honking noise. Um, yeah, I would expect it there to have a, a very unique Vespa sound, mm -hmm. like the Harley Davidson exhaust, which apparently Harley guys can pick out like for miles away, that kind of thing. I guess. I don't know. I'm not a Harley guy. The V-Twin. It's got a signature sound. It's the muffler, right? Isn't that the thing that does it? Is the... Most of them don't have any mufflers, but it's the, <laughs> it's the I believe angle that. of the of the engine. All right. Nice. So what does it sound like? Can you do an impression for us? Oh, man. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even think I could. <laughs> I can do like a Subaru. I got rrr, 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 rrr. Ah, no. I can't do <laughs> that was good. Hey, I can pick that out as a soup. It's like a, it's like oh a my God, was that? Wait, was that a, was that a 2004 Subaru Outback? <laughs> Nail! <laughs> nice. All right, I'm going to use some solid tools to get this very unique headlight geometry because it looks cool. I'll take that, subtract it from this. Oh, yeah, look at that. Look at that shape. Pretty. It is pretty good. And copy this piece, edit, paste it out of context. YouTube says that he's pretty sure that there is not a an Italian vehicle which would have a horn that sounds as aggressive as that thing. <laughs> They're polite. You just turn the volume down. A scoozy. <laughs> beep, beep. Get out of the way. <laughs> Okay, so now I'm trying to figure out how to make this because this this handlebar is not as simple as I was thinking it was. It's actually fairly shapely, but maybe let's see, let's see, let's see what I can do with uh, let's get rid of this. Okay, so another way to do, and uh, we've looked at this before, um, another way to do organic -y type modeling inside of uh, SketchUp is to do kind of when you go to, to push pull, is tap the option key and it'll give you a brand new face. And then what you can do is you can actually grab that face and move it around. And it will keep you connected to that last piece. So you can actually 
you know, create geometry like that that flows. Obviously, it doesn't look look awesome right now, but if I come in here and grab all that, soften it. This actually has a face on the inside. Uh, you know, you can you can create some kind of flowing shapes with just push pull and rescaling your faces as you go. Tyson did that a lot. Uh, YouTube's wondering if organicy is an extension that he hadn't heard of. <laughs> yes. It might not be yet, but it could be. That's right. Someday. Organicy, and I'll just throw my trademark out right now. That's mine. Don't touch it. Um. Gosh, this one's gonna be rough because. All right, let's let's get these handlebars in here. I'm gonna put a circle right here. Pull that out. Rotate that. There's my handlebar. I'll uh, get option, pull that out like that. Maybe I'll do a little bit of a Why, why are you refusing to scale? What's your deal? There we go. Hmm. And I'll pull that out to about here. And then, again, I'll option push pull out like this. Grab it and scale it. Cool. Push pull again. Take this one all the way to the middle. And then I'll scale that again. Maybe winging it just a touch right now. Because that's something I, feel I like, don't ever do. I feel like winging it is was probably, you know, the the kind of the, the spirit of the day whenever they were designing the Vespa anyway. I feel like what you're doing is on brand for this vehicle. <laughs> Okay, I thought you were say on brand for uh, how I model. Yep. That too. <laughs> I just think your style tends to be very organic -y. I agree. That's, funny. That's what I'm shooting for. That word shooting for organic -y. Repeatedly. All right, so now... <laughs> I know that laugh. I know that one. That's Chevy Chase losing it in the end of uh, Christmas Vacation. Is that right? Is it? I don't know. I just oh. nice. You you're an aficionado of uh, of dry kind of whispery laughs. No, my family <laughs> just watches Christmas Vacation every year, and uh, I recognize I know, that. I I know that laugh. I know that laugh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. that is a distinct I a, laugh. I got a few of them. That's good. That's good. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. So I'm gonna just create a couple shapes right now, and then uh, probably throw them on the Vespa, and then try to stitch them together. We'll see how that goes. Take that. Plunk that right there. Yeah, that's not a bad. It's a pretty close uh, lineup, I feel like. Comes down a little bit. All right, I'm going to go with that shape. Um, okay. Obviously, they don't connect. Nothing that's happening right here is right. But we can make it, we can make this all happen. Um, all right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a circle, a circle. Right um, here. YouTube called out wondering if that was or if you have Muttley's laugh, laugh, which you probably don't even know who Muttley is, Matt. Uh, no, I have a it's a dog, right? Yeah, that laughs like that. It's probably this. I don't have that exact laugh, but this is probably inspired by uh, very much to some extent. You know, yeah. In the zeitgeist. Yeah, the, you have the uh, one from the... Star Trek. 
Oh, what is that? It was a meme. I I don't know if it was actually from Star Trek. Do you know what I'm talking about? No. I, oh. I didn't think laugh like that. I didn't think it'd yeah, be a laugh. Yeah, it's like a dry laugh. Trek. It's just like a meme. I don't know what it's from, but it's from one of the, I think from Star Trek. Huh. <laughs> is it like that? No. It's like really dry. It's like that, yeah, sort of. <laughs> okay, so how many do you have? <laughs> All of them. Okay. <laughs> yeah, oh. that one goes long. That's a long one. Okay, so I went and just did a search for Star Trek laughing, and one of the first results is a GIF of Clint Howard as like an eight-year-old, you know, like a little kid laughing in the original Star Trek. It is a huh. very frightening image because Clint Howard is, he's, he didn't get the looks uh, of the, of the Howard boys. <laughs> right. Like little Ronnie did. Yeah. I don't even know who you guys uh, are talking about. Clint Howard, you might recognize him from uh, Gentle Ben or every Ron Howard movie that he's ever made. He's Ron Howard's younger brother and hmm. ends up being a, a bit of a character actor and all kinds of stuff. All right. Yeah. You just go. Go look up uh, Star Trek laughing gif, and then you'll see what at least the young, frightening Clint Howard looked like. It was not a good yeah. look for him. I found it. It was I was totally wrong about Star Trek. It's Zach. Zach uh, how do you say his last name? Galifianakis. It's that one. I don't know why I said Star Trek. <laughs> was it? It was. It, does it have a star in the name? What's the name? What's the name of the show? Do you know? Or the? No idea. Uh, is it from Between Two Ferns? Uh, it doesn't. Oh, dinner for schmucks. Oh Apparently. yeah, hmm. Steve Carell. Never saw it. You're fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> there's other stuff you can watch. If there's a wheeze laugh, then I'm in. You know, like Wheezy, Wheezy from uh... Wheezy F Baby. No, what was it from? What was it from Good Times? Uh, moving on up to the east side. Yeah, right. What's the name of that show? Jefferson's. That's the one. Yeah, the Jefferson's. Yeah. Uh, you ever do uh, so? It, I guess it depends on if you've got a smart device, right? I've got I got Google because I don't trust Amazon. I trust I trust Google more than I trust Amazon with me asking it questions and not being sneaky about it. Mm -hmm. But half the time I don't know, remember the name of a song, so I just sort of sing a line. I'm like, "Hey Google, play blah 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 blah," and then it always figures it out. Oh, from like humming it too can you like supposedly although uh i've never had any luck with that maybe that was like a launch feature that didn't make it or something when i first got shazam and like what was that like 2011 or 12 or something i thought that it worked like that yeah <laughs> like you could just whistle a tune and then it would tell you what it is but no it's like it has to have the exact sound wave and then still it, it's a lot better now obviously but now you can actually do the whistling thing. If you're a good whistler, I am not. Except that it's always just like Roger Whitaker. You're like, no. <laughs> you probably, I don't know. You, maybe you've got to be a, like a, a proper whistling fan to know who Roger Whitaker is. Yeah, I am not a whistling fan, apparently. Yeah, I don't know what you guys are talking about over there. That's fine. Just go look up Roger Whitaker. You'll be blown away by his whistling talents. I gotta be honest, I'm probably not gonna look up Roger Wickelfer. <laughs> I, uh, you should. Wickler? Wickelfer? I feel like the handlebars are too low. Or your seat's too high. Yeah, I agree. That's low rider. A low rider. I guess it's not too low, though. Oh, good. YouTube knows who Roger Roger Whitaker is. It's funny for me to speak about Can YouTube, you the person, as we're talking about the entity. Mm -hmm. Really, anybody in chat, you could just say YouTube for. <laughs> exactly. Sure. I don't. I can't be bothered with actually reading names. So you're all YouTube. <laughs> you're all YouTube to me. Nice. Yeah. That's what I do. I like to think of more of a us tube. We tube. Me too? Okay, sure. That sounds a little selfish.
All right. Resoften that, that. The dog now is is my dog. Okay. Dogs. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna take these two pieces. Explode them apart. Oh. Nice. Gosh, those are good wheels, man. I'd take that for a spin. All right, where are we at? Okay, we, we're we're just under two hours, so I feel like the tail light is a thing that got to get on here. Um, Feels appropriate to sort of be the last sort sort of the last thing, really. Last uh, thing you do before I leave you in the dust. That's right. Exactly. Unfortunately, uh, the one view I don't have of the tail light is the actual like straight on view of the tail light. Yeah, I don't know what's happening here. I'm thinking maybe that's like a shroud kind of thing there, and then this is the actual lighty uppy party. A plastic bit. Sounds kind of good, I guess, yeah. mostly. All right, so we'll take that, and uh, let's see what other view do we have. Okay, yeah, we can make it work with this. If I come in here, pull this across to like here. Oh no, here's a tail. There's a back end. Hmm. Ooh, ooh, hey, ooh. Don't really know what I'm looking at there. It made me a little dizzy. Um, <coughs> let's try. So I got like a kind of comes down and it goes out and it kicks back so we'll take this end back here scoot it oh so it kind of goes this <laughs> like I don't trust my myself. All right, it goes like that, and then this kind of angles down, and then it kicks back. So we'll do something like this. This will come through parallel to this guy also. I guess I could draw this in 2D and then distort it and drag it out would probably be the smart thing to do. And maybe beyond being smart. Okay, and then this line, drop down vertically, and then this line, come back in kind of like that okay that'll work i think wow what a stupid last step to decide to throw in <laughs> okay so something like that i'm gonna grab this point and bring it up uh, 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 uh. Ooh, that's her thunder. It's weird. Yeah, that's my my wife's out walking. She said there's a bunch. I think that's what my dog is barking at. Oh, I mean, he doesn't understand. My dog's downstairs cowering behind the garbage can right now. <laughs> I do not have a brave dog. Okay, this is stupid. I'm 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 good enough. We can just. There we go. All right, so I'm going to grab this. I'm going to use vertex tools to make this planer. Uh, to 
transform. Uh, I can just do a turn here, I think. Make planar. That's going to make all of this flat. So that means I can take this minus this, 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 and Offset it. Nice. And I can grab this face and we're joint push pull along. Oh, wrong one. Vector push pull. Oh, these are so, so tiny. Is that vector push pull? Can you tell by the colors? <laughs> Uh, one <laughs> one who knew what those colors were could probably do that. Um, I think it's this one. If I hit, there we go. That's what I'm looking for. Nice. Let it like that. And then, if I were to just walk in and see you modeling this, I'd have no idea what the heck you're. What's going on here? And then we could say, "Welcome to the club, Jody." That's good. I guess I guess it's good that you also don't know what you're doing. Yeah. Nobody knows the model I'm making. Okay, so I'm good with this. <laughs> I I always feel like there's that one piece on any given model where I'm like, wow. I could probably get a, a blown up picture of this and just just model this tail light. That would that would be like what I could do. All right, so I'll take that and drop it again in the middle. Oh. Looking good. Holy cow. Pretty slick. All right. It's like a, an Italian Harley. <laughs> Basically. All right. And something I just never seem to do. All right. Back fender to the front of the wheel. 170. 1770. Six. Year of our Lord. Go America. Millimeters? You guys buy that? Millimeters? Um sure. Right. Well, I think you got got the highest praise possible. Jennifer said adorable. Aw. Alright. So now looking at it in this format, it just looks like a Lego motorcycle. It does. Don't you hate when you get done? You're like, wow, that was two hours of work. Wow, that looks simple. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see let's see what happens if we put 1770 millimeters All right, hop it on hop on us melee. Yeah, that's... so the horn that you should be looking for by the way, Matt, is more of a meep meep kind of thing. Oh, nice roadrunner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That looks like that could be the right size. Yeah, yeah it looks it's, yeah. It looks about right. Almost six foot. Five foot eight. Lengthwise? Right. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I got five nine and fifteen sixteenths at a random selection of geometry. <laughs> okay. This is accuracy like picking two points and measuring them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'll say accuracy does depend on you uh picking the right points there. So all right, I'm gonna grab this stuff and put it on a new tag which I'm going to call reference so I can turn it off but it'll still be in the model in case anybody wants to download it and play with this 
What, what is this? It's gone. Spare parts. It's you know, gone. I always have this whenever I'm building something. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's what I was looking for. I'm, uh, I, I have to have to say that an hour ago, I would not thought would not have thought we would be where we are right now. Why? That turned out. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> I don't. I don't know if that was a positive or a negative. I'm going to choose to hear that as a positive. Yeah, it's positive. Okay. Keggy uh, also said that's really good. Excellent. Nice. <laughs> didn't line that quite perfectly but that was pretty good awesome cool <laughs> still like it i still like it awesome well nice hey work. that's uh that's so so tyson tyson said that's killer and i wonder if it's so killer that now tyson is just like oh i don't ever need to model this mm. see i think i think uh I don't think we should let him off that easy. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. So are you going to put this online anywhere? Yeah, this will end up on the 3D Warehouse. I will post a link in the forum to the uh, the forum post that we are using for this. And uh, yeah, I'll stick it up there. And I think we're, I think we're there. We made it. Yeah. Awesome. Hey. Everybody, needs, everybody needs to go download it and paint it their appropriate... Uh, Official or non-official Vespa color. That's right. Make it a solid. Print it. Uh, do your thing. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna call it right there. I'm gonna get it up there to get it loaded, and uh, we're we're gonna call this done. Um, thank you guys for coming. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for watching. Um, thanks for your input. And uh, yeah, I don't think we got a whole lot else. So next week, next Wednesday, we got fireside chat. Uh, Izzy Swan, you may know him from Instagram or YouTube. He makes crazy things out of wood and he designs them all in SketchUp, is going to be on the show. So swing by. That's going to be fun. Check it out on crowdcast.com. Search for SketchUp or go to 3dbasecamp.sketchup.com. You can get the whole the whole series. The Every episode is going to happen. Uh, links and everything. That's Wednesday. Friday, we'll be back here. Uh, Mr. Tyson's going to be taking over. He's going to model something the sydney opera house oh jody said it not me tyson <laughs> <laughs> um yeah it's gonna be fun uh oh yeah keggy just called <laughs> called tyson out on the sydney opera house wow yeah just... that's why i said it i was i was just repeating keggy but i was making sure the world all could hear it uh yeah frankly said uh seeing me do it makes you believe that you can do it too i know you can do that because if i can do it you can do it so uh this can be done anyone can do this um but yeah so check us out this coming week wednesday or coming up next wednesday and next friday we'll be doing more stuff and uh, it's more fun if you're there for it so uh otherwise i think we're about uh we're, we're there two hours of modeling we got a Vespa. That's that's all I could ask for. That's pretty pretty impressive. So very nice. Yeah, it only took three years of prodding. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <And> it <laughs> finally happened. <laughs> Thank you guys. Awesome. Well, uh, yeah. So we're gonna call it at that point. Thank you guys. Have an awesome week. Stay safe. Stay sane. And we will see you next time. Taking it. See you next week. Thanks. See you.